what a season the Bobcats are having. They are just three wins shy of last year's total in 20 fewer games. They come into this one 32 and nine and they have played Texas awfully close over the last couple of seasons as Sitlali Gutierrez starts off with a strike. Well, you talk about their record and talking with head coach Ricky Woodard said, I don't know if there's ever been a point in my career where we're at 32 wins this early in season already. And that's just a testament to what this team is doing this season. They are very experienced, though. They might be the only team in the country that did not lose a single player from 2023 to this 2024 season. They've already beat number 12, Texas A&M, rallying late in that one. Last week, they beat Baylor as well, 6-1. to one. So they're having a tremendous year. And, of course, we know the weekend the Longhorns are coming off of. They became the first Big 12 team to beat Oklahoma in consecutive games since Missouri when they were in the Big 12 in 2011. And you were here for two of those three games at McCombs Field, and the ballpark was electric for that series. Yeah, I haven't heard McCombs Field be that loud in a long time. And obviously supporting the Longhorns, but just seeing some really great softball at that as well. But so fun to be in that atmosphere. And you know the players were feeding off it. You saw the momentum they got actually Friday night, late in the game, starting to put a rally together in the seventh, and they just carried that over into Saturday. And Earls to left field. That one gets away from Henry. And Earls will remain at first. So leadoff hitter aboard defensively for Texas. A few changes. Next to Henry in left field, Leanne Good getting the start. As Earls has now reached for 21 consecutive games. So Good in left field for Texas. The other change is Washington back at second after Good got the start there in the last game. Otherwise, everything as usual for the Texas defense. So here is Piper Randolph in the two spot for Texas State. She had the game-winning hit against Texas last year when she tripled down the line and right in the ninth inning of that 5-4 to four Bobcats win over the Longhorns. Well, Hannah Earls and Piper Randolph will pair up to be a feisty one and two hitters to be tough outs. And you saw there, Hannah Earls, even with two strikes, able to go ahead and get the base hit into left center field. But Piper Randolph the same way. You'll see her try to use some short games. She'll slap an occasion. She has gone more to swinging away, had some power. But Coach Woodard, a lot of options with those two at the top of the lineup. The throw back to first, and they got her. Atwood throws out Earls for the first out of the night. What a great snap throw by Reese Atwood. Katie Stewart coming around the backside, getting Hannah Earls. Well, with that, we will have a challenge off. You obviously changing a momentum right play. So Ricky Woodard and Texas State win their first challenge of the contest. Hannah Earls is safe. And again, she can motor three consecutive seasons. At least 20 stolen bases. Reese Atwood, a grin on her face about that. So the count three and oh now to Piper Randolph. With Earls back at first. And Texas State in business early. Two on with no outs, and that will prompt a visit to the circle. Well, not the start that Texas was looking for from Sit Lolly. That, if there's a more nerve wracking game, that would be it, especially being here at home, wanting to defend your own turf. Vanderford lays down the bunt, and she will head back to the batter's box. Sarah Vanderford. The all-time program leader in RBIs and doubles, and second in hits to Texas's own Kristen Zaleski. That's right, the Texas assistant coach, the all-time leader in hits in Texas State history and batting average. <laughs> Count goes 0-2. Kristen Zaleski is going to be awfully tough to catch in all-time hits, she's about 60 ahead of Sarah Vanderford. 
in that category. Zaleski was a left-handed hitter with incredible speed, so had a little bit more tools to work with, but there you see right now the all-time ranks for Vanderford. Vanderford gives one a ride to left center, but Peyton Henry makes it look easy. She covers so much ground so quickly, and there is out number one of the contest. Henry made that great diving grab against Oklahoma, and then she did it the weekend before against Oklahoma State as well in Stillwater. And Caden Henry really coming into her own in the outfield, being able to own that center field spot, play with a lot of confidence. So a couple times her and Vivi Martinez knock into each other, but you know the communication has been there in practice now saying, hey, let's listen for each other. But Caden Henry, strong outing Saturday and Sunday against Oklahoma, being able to anchor this defense for Texas. One away for Anna Jones, who watches the count go 2-0, the former transfer from LSU. She's hitting 321, and Ricky Woodard said, we just have to tell her to stop bunting with runners in scoring position. She said, I didn't bring you over from LSU to bunt. We want you to swing away. Well, and Ricky Woodard will be that direct with you. I remember one point when I was coaching on her staff, Kaylin McKay had transferred in from Arkansas, someone we brought in for power, and she was just trying to hit hard ground balls up the middle, and Ricky said, I did not bring you here to hit ground balls. So she makes it very clear what your mission is, and yes, Anna Jones, an athlete that she's very, she was very excited to get from the transfer portal. I'll tell you what, that one turned just foul. But a lot of times as an athlete, you see a hole and you're like, oh, I can butt and get on base. Well. That's great, except for you want to make sure that you're getting runs in when you can. So if you can square a ball up too, Coach Woodard would rather see you swing the bat and square it up. It's not always a pass the bat situation. Sometimes it's a, hey, who's going to be the one that wants to go ahead and step in and drive the run in? 3-1, and how about this? Base is loaded for Texas State here in the first with only one out. Well, this is the question off an emotional weekend against Oklahoma. How would Texas follow up against a very good ranked Texas State team? It's a big moment already in this game, and we're only in the first inning. Well, it's a big moment. Sid Lali Gutierrez unable to land her drop ball outside. That arm side pitch right there in the strike zone. It's getting away from her. Grace Atwood going to go ahead and take time, see if she can calm Sid Lali down. Batter, Carmen Bass, third on the team in RBIs. Dangerous hitter, she had two hits last year against Texas in the win over the Longhorns. Atwood, a quick chat with Gutierrez. Again, it was so good against Oklahoma and has been so good all year undefeated. Has walked two and given up a single here in the first. And there is ball two to Bass. On the year, Gutierrez coming into the game had only walked six compared to 30 strikeouts. This is very uncharacteristic for Gutierrez. She's usually able to use both sides of the plate right now. Neither side very consistent. Haven't been able to see the off-speed pitch. There it is, but right over the heart of the plate. Coming off the complete game win against Oklahoma, allowed one run. Before that, another complete game outing, allowing one run to Oklahoma State. Bass chops one over to third. Scott goes home, snagged by Atwood. Great job as that one was a little bit wide. She hung on for out number two. Well, this absolutely the right idea by Mia Scott. The defense was playing for a double play if it's there, but on the run in, tried a little dart throw, but I think had a little bit too much on it. Got on Reese Atwood fast, but able to secure that and keep Texas State scoreless. Here's former Longhorn J.J. Smith waving at that one. What a roll she's been on. She has homered in three straight games, including one that went over the scoreboard at Texas State last weekend. Remember, she started every game of the Women's College World Series for the Longhorns a couple of seasons ago. Hit 319 in Oklahoma City, including big three-run homer against Arizona. 
Up the middle, Washington bobbled, recovers in time. Oh my, a close play here in the first inning. But Tech. The knee of that lady out there. She asked Katie to sign it post game. She had a tremendous weekend, but going up against one of the best pitchers in the nation in this one, Jessica Mullins, who is number three in the country in ERA and strikeouts, 21 and four on the year. She's been a great pitcher throughout her career, but she has taken it to another level this season, Kat. Well, there gets to a point in your career when you're looking at your last season and you realize, you know what, it's all it's all in now or it's never. And Jessica Mullins, while she has been a fighter and a competitor since her freshman season, made a name for herself very early, she has been the arm for Texas State this year. She keeps them in every game. She has the attitude. She has the passion to go with it. Mia Scott thrown out. Nice play in the hole by Hannah Earls. One away. Jessica Mullins, 90 wins in her career, and has that ERA at .78 this season. Yeah, under one a game. She throws in the upper 60s. She has a little rise and a curve, but her change is the difference maker. She can land that pitch any point in time. There it is, first pitch to Leanne Good. But she will throw it in any count, and it is deadly. You cannot see it coming out of her hand. Her body's the same as when she throws her hard stuff makes it very hard to hit Jessica Mullins hard when she's able to mix speeds. Now Leanne Good getting the start tonight. She's had success against Mullins in the past, homered off of her last year. That one run loss in general, pretty good numbers against the senior. Good ahead in the count, 2-0. 265 hitter on the season. Well, Leanne Good and Jessica Mullins also played together with the Texas Bombers, so they are familiar with each other. That one grabbed by Vanderford at third for the second out. Texas's offense comes into tonight, number two in the nation in batting average. Number six in runs per game. Those numbers, runs per game, that's certainly taken a dip over the past few series against Oklahoma State and Oklahoma. Well, Katie Stewart takes ball one. And you would expect a dip in run production when you're going up against the top arms in the game. You're not going to continue. And same thing for Oklahoma coming in. You know, you saw they were averaging 8.7 runs a game. They're facing a pitching staff, as you mentioned, number four in the country. You're probably not going to put up close to nine runs a game against a staff like that. And so same for Texas. They went up against Lexi Kilfoyle twice. She's one of the top pitchers in the country. You're not going to put up eight and nine runs against her. So while some people will be like, oh, the offense is cold, well, they're facing really, really good pitching. And in that regard, you have to take what you can get, make adjustments, but you're not going to put up what your gaudy average normally is. And when your own pitching and defense is stepping up, it doesn't matter quite as much as we saw last weekend. 2-1 on the way to Stewart. Jammed her a bit. Shallow left, charging in and making the diving grab is Sydney Harvey. Keep herself out of deep pitch counts and out of trouble. You talk about some big wins this year for Gutierrez. Beats Oklahoma. Then earlier this season beat Tennessee, who was ranked number two at the time. That was the highest ranked team Texas had beaten in two years. And she earned Big 12 Pitcher of the Week honors for that accomplishment. Katarate over to short. Martinez. Texas's defense stepping up against Oklahoma and Mike White said listen they have to we're not getting the same strikeout numbers we got last year or in years past so they have to be good this season yeah he said they're not getting double digits they're not striking out 10 to 15 hitters a game so there are 18 plays that have to be made over time in the game and they have to be better at it and you know Alex, to be honest, the last three years, he's talked about that over and over and what that number is for his defense to be a championship caliber club. And he knows they haven't hit it yet, but they showed very good defense and a lot of focus on making not just the routine plays, but some big plays as well against Oklahoma. If they can carry that over for the rest of the season, 
they're going to have confidence on the defensive side, but it's going to allow the pitchers too to pitch a little bit more freely, knowing that they're backed up. Speaking of defense, Sidney Harvey, who's at the plate now, made that great grab and left to end the first inning. She's taken over the rest of the year in left field for Sierra Trahan. That was a huge loss last week. The junior outfielder tore her knee. That's a player who's a former Sunbelt Conference freshman of the year, one of their top hitters. Trahan is now gone for the season. She was a big part of their success this year. Well, Trahan normally in the two hole uh, behind Hannah Earls, Piper Randolph's three. So you usually have three speedsters all back to back, but a knee injury in their game against Baylor. They're tracking Gutierrez pretty good right now. That's the second foul ball that narrowly missed staying fair. Well, Gutierrez is working behind, and so she's having to elevate in the zone. And you don't ever want to elevate your drop ball. And we've actually heard Coach White talk about that with Mac Morgan as well. Your drop ball, when it's lower part of the zone, you get ground balls that your defense can handle. As soon as you move it up in the zone, a lot of line drives and fly balls. So she has to be able to own about knee height, so that way she can work down. There is strikeout number one of the contest for Gutierrez. Well, Gutierrez, a little off speed pitch on the outside part of the plate. Great job by Reese Atwood to meet that pitch, keep it on the corner. Well, you and I were talking about during the commercial break, you know, for Texas State, that was a golden opportunity in the first inning. Bases loaded with one out. How many more chances like that would they get? Because now Gutierrez has settled into a rhythm. She's retired four in a row after three of the first four reached. Well, and it was a big opportunity for Texas State to take the momentum, and they are very much an energy and momentum team. When they get it, they will run with it. But right now, Silali Gutierrez and Texas State defense with all the momentum as we go into the bottom. He's riding his scoreless streak. That's now at 21 and two thirds consecutive innings, four plus games for the senior out of Tarkenton, Texas. Who again has just been phenomenal so far this year. 1 0 to Reese Atwood. Rip that one past Mullins to center field, and Atwood coming off that. Memorable play last weekend. That played the play. Mike White said one of the best plays he has seen. Just even going back through the annals of Texas history, and now Atwood is aboard. Well, this pitch off speed, but up in the zone. Reese Atwood likes the ball elevated in the zone. She does a great job just taking that right back up the middle, just past the head of Jessica Mullins, actually. First base runner of the contest for Texas, and Aya Wallace takes over at first for Atwood. And here comes Vivi Martinez, the sophomore, coming off a great weekend against the Sooners. She reached six times, including going three for three on Saturday. Drove in the game tying run, scored the game winner. This is a player who was in and out of the lineup earlier this season, had the great freshman year, but was working on her defense this year. Back to being a mainstay at short. Well, I would say right now, Vivi Martinez just turned a corner. Not only defensively, we talked about how flawless she was in that series against Oklahoma, but offensively, she'd been a little bit up and down throughout season, some streaks of where there were a lot of strikeouts, but then she matched it up with some power. There's a little bit of power, rope swung to right. That'll find its way into the corner. Rounding third is Wallace, and Texas is up 1-0 here in the second. Vivi Martinez with the hot bat, the RBI triple for the sophomore. Well, the sophomore drove in the first run in that victory over Oklahoma on Saturday, and she keeps the extra base hits going right down the line. That tucked in right inside the foul line. I actually thought she could have had a triple all the way, but she stopped at second base, obviously advanced when she saw Kat Zarate misplay that throw in. So Martinez at third. Here's Jolie Mitchell who fouls one off. That ends the scoreless streak for Mullins. And again, 21 and two thirds consecutive innings. Jolie Mitchell been a great addition for the Longhorns, a team leader in doubles. Her RBI single was the difference against Texas State back in the one nothing Longhorns win over the Bobcats in February.
Well, that was a pinch hit double at that. She went in after Katie Stewart had gotten on base. The competitor she is. This matchup between a competitor in the circle, an intense competitor in the circle, and an intense batter in the box is one fans ought to love to see. Jolie Mitchell, one of the most intense hitters I think I've seen in college softball. Chops one. Over to third, Vanderford goes to first, and the run comes in, make it 2 nothing Longhorns. Well, this weak round ball in the hole, Vanderford able to come over and take it off, but J.J. Smith coming off the bag too soon to make the throw on Vivi Martinez. So Texas State unable to record an out. First base umpire Bubba Ewald right there on the call there to see J.J. Smith pull off. Score that E3. So when you look at the pitchers Texas has faced this year as laying down the bun is Caden Henry and the offense just continuing to break through here in the second inning, a single, a double. Mitchell reached on the error. Now Henry with the bunt single. Two on, still no outs here in the second. And they'll go out to talk to Mullins. Texas has faced, when you look at national, already set a career high with six home runs on the season. Is batting 322. One popped up in the glove of Kellner for the first out. Well, right there, as an offensive player, that is just too easy of an out to give Texas State in a situation where they're pressing. The conversation, Coach Woodard, to her defense had to be, let's take a deep breath, let's get some outs, make sure we're making the plays, not trying to do too much. And right there, Alyssa Washington chasing a high pitch on a bunt situation where you could have runners at second and third with one out. Letting the Bobcats off the hook a little bit there with an easy out. And here is one of the most underrated players in America right now. One of the best offenses in the nation. Ashton Maloney is leading the Longhorns in hitting, batting 417. And in Big 12 play, been the fifth best hitter in the entire conference Hitting 455. Steady Eddie there in the nine spot. Well, she's always steady, and Coach White describes it. He thinks, she, he said, I think she thinks she should be hitting seven or 800, and that should be easy. But that's the standard she has for herself. But with that same standard and that same desire, she's on an eight game hit streak. Has really been an unsung hero for Texas for quite a while down there in the bottom part of the line. Scooped up, Vanderford throws it away. One more run will come in, and Texas extends their lead to 3 0. Two now in scoring position as Maloney ends up on second. Maloney with the soft slap. Sarah Vanderford comes over to cut it off, which you have to do with the speed of Maloney, although I think she had that beat out anyways, but the errant throw allows Texas to score and Maloney and Henry to move up an extra 60 feet. Scott pops up. That's now three errors in the inning by Texas State's defense, and I'll tell you what, that has been the story for Jessica Mullins when she has faced Texas throughout her career. Nearly 40% of the runs she has allowed in her career to the Longhorns have been unearned runs. Some of that comes with the, the intensity of the game. This is a rivalry, so to speak, in the fact that it's two schools that are 30 minutes apart. These are athletes that have grown up playing together. Texas always, you know, the big dog, they're ranked. And a lot of times Texas State trying to stay in the picture, stay in the conversation and just say, hey, we're here too. I mean, I've been part of this rivalry as a coach and you have teams that can come in and beat Texas and you want everyone else to understand and see that. And so Texas, Texas State always comes in with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder, something to prove and trying to prove that sometimes can put a pressure on yourself to where you rush some plays. But at the same time, Alex, you and I get a front row seat to this all season long. The speed of Texas still to me is what makes some teams create so many errors is the fact that they're rushing plays 
instead of just trying to stay in themselves and making routine plays. Only one of the three runs she has allowed have been earned. A two two from Mullins with two away. And we'll do it again. Texas out hitting Texas State 4 1. And again, the defense. The big difference here in the second, three errors from the Bobcats. And that was after Mullins retired the Longhorns in order, one, two, three, to begin the game. Different story in this frame. Well, in talking about the errors, I think the unfortunate and most costly was J.J. Smith pulling her foot too soon. That was a routine ground ball. Vivi Martinez was already going to beat the throw home, but you have to make sure you secure that first out. They'd be out of the inning if that out had been, in fact, secured. Full count on the way. One more ball loads the bases. J.J. Smith looks on. Pitch number eight of this at bat. Coming up. And it will be a ninth. Uh, Katie Stewart is on deck. She's been as hot as anybody at the plate, so Mullins Certainly doesn't want to face her with the bases loaded. Payoff pitch, and she will face the freshman with the bases full of Longhorns. So here comes Katie Stewart, who drove in three of the four runs Texas scored in the last two games against Oklahoma. Game-winning double on Saturday against the Sooners, and then what would be the game-winning homer on Sunday against the champs. Why Reese Atwood was lighting things up early in season, Katie Stewart was quietly behind her doing work, continuing to put up strong numbers as well. Ha got a little quiet the big first part of Big 12 play with that trip to Houston and then UCF, but started to heat up in that Oklahoma series. We mentioned it. You saw the two hits, the home run and the RBI double. She had a double rob from her with a runner leaving early, but Katie Stewart really starting to heat up here at the later, later half. Leads it 46 to 15. But getting out to the big three-run lead on a pitcher like Jessica Mullins after just two innings, that's saying a lot as this one fouled off. And again, Texas State had the bases loaded in the first, but couldn't take advantage. Well, in this game, it might be tilted different if Texas State, in fact, created their own momentum by breaking through in that first inning. They were threatening, but it allowed Texas to kind of let that holding their breath out a bit, relax, and go back to work offensively. But there have been a lot of innings put on Jessica Mullins' arm, and there are a lot more to come, obviously, here in this game. But they host Louisiana this weekend, a big Sun Belt series for them. So you have to imagine she's going to throw quite a bit more, start at least two of those in the coming week or and in the coming days. It's a great point because those two are neck and neck in the conference standings. And as great of a matchup as this was on paper, top 25 contest, you're right, that is more important for them in the long run. Mullins threw 30 pitches in that last inning. Well, as opposed to 13 in the first inning. So she got Texas State off the field rather quickly. But Texas working, working the count, putting balls in play hard, though, too, and forcing Texas State defense to have to rush to make a couple plays. Texas State up to 16th in the RPI. As of the latest rankings, that one bounced over to Scott. Stewart with the reach, and no, pulled her off. Hannah Earls, the speedster, is aboard. Well, Hannah Earls has speed, but Mia Scott had plenty of time to make this play. But the throw, in fact, pulling Katie Stewart a little wide. 
It looks like her foot's on the bag, though. Have to wonder. I don't think. Don't think Texas is coming out to review that. We talked to Mike White this week, and I think he would agree. With the way Texas is pitching, their offense is set up. If their defense can play clean and better than clean, like we saw against Oklahoma, they are obviously very tough to beat. The million dollar question is, can they consistently play very good defense, clean defense, game in and game out? When I think they're at a point that they've proven to themselves that they can. They can make the routine plays over and over. They can make some hard plays. We saw the relay in from center field, so they know how to control things defensively. Obviously, there's going to be an error on the scoreboard there. I'm not so sure that Katie Stewart's foot was off the bag. But still, Mia Scott did a great job against Oklahoma. And I think to the casual fan, it looks like she made routine plays. So many of those were not routine. She had to move her feet and be able to make things happen. And just like the first inning, Texas State with two on and no outs. Both of these batters reached in the first. Earls and now Piper Randolph. Can they take advantage here in the third? Well, the experience of Texas State does pay off in the top part of the lineup. You have three seniors, actually four seniors, excuse me, one, two, three, and four with Earls, Randolph, Vanderford, Jones. And so that's a lot of experience on the Division I softball field, especially offensively being able to make things happen. We talked about it in the first inning. Hannah Earls, Piper Randolph, and you used to sandwich Sierra Trahan in there. They all feed off each other because they're all similar hitters. They have speed. They can play the short game. So they like to be able to create havoc and force defenses to have to pay attention to what all three of them are doing. This is one of the best hitters in Texas State history, Sarah Vanderford, watching the count go 2-0. and Ricky Woodard said, this is a player who doesn't come around too often. 36 career home runs, 231 hits to her name. And there is strike one to Vanderford. A lot of speed on the bases. Chopped over to Short Martinez, on to first. And they get the first out of the inning as the runners advance to second and third. Well, wow, that's a productive at bat for the Bobcats to move two runners into scoring position now. That's a big out for Sitlali Gutierrez to keep Sarah Vanderford in the infield. Here is Anna Jones. She walked in the first inning to load the bases. See what she does here. Hitting 321. Again, the former LSU product. This is a senior-laden lineup. The top four batters in the lineup, all seniors, and their ace, Mullins, a senior as well. It's been a big reason for their huge success this year, 32-9. and nine. Well, and then you have J.J. Smith in the six-hole, senior as well, so. Harris scooped it up, and nobody was at first, and Texas State is on the board. And Bass coming up with just one out here in the third inning. Carmen Bass, third on the team in RBIs. Shows bunt. Well, Sitlali Gutierrez had a much quicker inning in the second in eight pitch. Inning a little bit different here in the third. Texas State made her pitch a lot of pitches, 25 to be exact, in the first inning as well. So it's really the top of this lineup that works the count against Sitlali Gutierrez. Runner is going, cut off wisely by Martinez. Throw over to third, not in time. The runner advancing to second, which was Jones. She is safe. 
But I tell you what, a lot of teams would get caught there allowing the run to come home. Not the case. Well, this actually great execution by Texas on the cutoff. Washington noticing that Anna Jones didn't go all the way to second, gets her back to first. The throw to third just not in time to get Piper Randolph. Heads up by Anna Jones to continue to push the envelope. A uh, challenge has been issued. The run at first base. And Jones did not leave early. So she is safe with the mid on over at second. Randolph at third, one out. The count will be 0 and 2 to Bass Texas State. Nearly 70 stolen bases on the year, top 25 in the country. Bass, one of the RBI leaders on this team, 28 on the season. She can produce. See what she does here. Ball one from Ali Gutierrez. Great job by Sitlali Gutierrez coming into the inner half. Able to locate that drop ball in, something she's been struggling with against the Bobcats so far. This one stroke to left field, it'll drop foul into the shadows. Talked about the big ranked wins Texas State has pulled off already this season, beating AM. They trailed Texas AM by two late in that one, rallied in the bottom of the seventh to win it, and beat Baylor handily a week ago. Well, that win, walk off win against Texas AM, Carmen Bass was actually the hitter. Grounded into a fielder's choice and the throw to second, or excuse me, throw to first to try to double her off. Ended up getting past the first baseman. So she's been in this pressure situation, put the ball in play and created some pressure on AM's defense. Another one foul off the bat of the sophomore. Gutierrez has had lengthy first and third innings. Eighth pitch of this at bat on the way. Bass to left field, she delivers. Two runs will come home, and Texas State has tied it at three. Well, this is why that first out of the inning against Hannah Earls is so important. You would have two outs here, but Carmen Bass, a great job. That ball even pressure in. That's not necessarily a corner, but she's expecting it. She drives that to left field. Nothing Leanne Good can do with the speed Texas State had on the bases, and the Bobcats have tied this at three. We said this is a really good Texas State team this year, number 16 in the RP RPI, and they're showing why. Tying it up with number one Texas. And here's the former Longhorn, J.J. Smith. Tied for the team lead with seven home runs on the season. The Bobcats with three singles off of Gutierrez in this inning. Well, as we said, Texas State is an energy team. They will create their energy, they will create their momentum, and then run with it. And that's what they have done in this inning. And really, it started at the first inning of the game. They got runners on, so they knew it was possible to get runners on. Now they just needed the big hit to prove we can drive them in. Carmen Bass doing that. But as you said, Alex, they have those big wins. This is not 
foreign territory for the Bobcats. They come into every game believing that they can win and they put their best effort forward. Washington on to first. And this certainly isn't a team that gets intimidated by Texas. As we said, they've beaten them recently, a lot of close games. That is not a factor in these contests. Well, and they play so often. Since Coach White got here, Texas and Texas State have essentially played a home and home. Sometimes Texas State's appearance here at McCombs will be during the tournament season as part of one of their tournaments. But Texas always returns the trip down to San Marcos. This year, obviously flip-flopping the trip down to San Marcos was in February and Texas State coming here now, but they play each other at least twice a year. And then you talk about regionals last year. They, Texas State was sent here to Austin, so they are very familiar with each other. So that intimidation factor is absolutely not in play for Texas State. Atwood on to third. Oh, not in time. Bass just slid in there safely. Close call. Well, Carmen Bass reads this in the dirt and that it gets away from Atwood just a little bit, but she slides to the back part of the back and Atwood's throw short hopped Mia Scott. So those two factor in for an extra 60 feet for Carmen Bass. Wild pitch for Gutierrez on that play. Count two and one to Kat Zarate. Sophomore's been hampered by injuries over the last few weeks. They weren't even sure if she was going to play tonight. But now Gutierrez falls behind 3-1 again. Gutierrez, not a pitcher who issued a lot of walks this year. But two already in this game, and now behind 3-1 in this at-bat. Zarate to Washington. And the top half of the third inning comes to an end. We'll get coach your offense threatened in the first and finally broke through a few moments ago. What do you make of the job they're doing right now against Sitlali Gutierrez? Well, you know, if you're playing the Longhorns this year, you're going to have to score runs. So we knew coming into this, we were going to have to put some runs on the board. So tried to manufacture some early in the, the game and didn't quite get it done. So this time we're just going to go to work and swing the bats and see what happens. Coach, a little unfamiliar territory for Jessica Mullins, giving up the three spot there in the second. What was the conversation you guys were having with her as she came back into the dugout? Yeah, I, you know, I try to stay out of those pitching conversations, so I don't, I don't really know what the conversation was, but if it's for me, it's attack the zone. I mean, keep going at them. Can't work from behind on these hitters. Thanks, Coach. Yeah, thank, thank you, guys. Coach. The always candid, always honest Ricky Woodard, who you worked with for a number of years. I should have known better than to ask that question, <laughs> exactly. knowing that if I had been in the dugout with her still, it would have been like, well, that's your conversation. What do you think we said? They changed the line on Jessica Mullins. Originally, it was one earned run, two unearned. They have given her two earned as Atwood pops one off the netting for strike one. But again, Texas putting three up in the first two innings against one of the best pitchers in the country. But her offense responding. Let's see what Atwood does here for Texas, leading off the third. She singled in the second. Well, and when you talk about Texas State and the experience that they have, you just hit the nail on the head, Alex. Jessica Mullins, three runs scored against her in the second. The offense come back, comes back, has her back, and says, hey, we can put up 3-2. And when you have experience with nine, sen or, yeah, nine seniors, that's what it is. It's, it's about having each other's back, playing for and with each other, and Texas State doing that against the Longhorns right now. Strikeout number one on the night for Mullins. Well, Mullins using that rise ball up and in to great location, keeping that tight against Reese Atwood. You saw her do the finger point there. That was a subdued version. She has become so famous for that, synonymous for that finger point. She has her own T-shirt line and sweatshirt line that says sit down, and it has her a picture of her doing that finger point. She has 754 strikeouts. That's how many times she's done it throughout her career. You know, NIL these days, you can uh, make your brand, and Jessica Mullins has done that. And yes, her and Texas State feed off that energy from the circle. Do you sometimes wonder if you had NIL during your heyday? <laughs> Just I try not to. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, I mean, it's things. unimaginable how much. There's a lot of things I try not to imagine. <laughs> Just enjoy the moment, right? Yeah, you know, I had a great career. I loved it. Let's not play the what-if game. 
Sorry. That's all right. Moving on the count three and one to Vivi Martinez. We'll just be happy for Mullins out there. Right. Well, and I think there you see a walk to Vivi Martinez. And to Coach Woodard's point, she would have said attack the zone. But, you know, on your NIL point, I think it's twofold, though. While you get a lot, you still also have to create content, have to be available for things. And knowing myself, I don't know that I would have wanted to make myself <laughs> available for that much stuff during my free time. So who You knows? let your play do the talking. Yeah. Ball won, meanwhile, to Jolie Mitchell. You know, Mullins, the strikeout artist, that was just her first of the night. She has walked two, including that last one, to Martinez on the season. First, it's Mitchell backhanded in the hole by Earls. On the first nice stretch by J.J. Smith to get the out. Well, we talked about Texas's defense and how good their shortstop Vivi Martinez was last week. And Hannah Earls has now made two backhand plays with a strong throw to get Texas runners bang, bang. This one against Julie Mitchell. A big second out. Very good defensive shortstop as that one misses to Caden Henry. Henry, who's spent a good chunk of the year in the leadoff spot, hitting seventh today. Bella Dayton getting the night off. Dayton replaced Henry in the leadoff spot for the last handful of games. Caden Henry's been, it, her defense has been so good, it really doesn't matter what she's doing offensively. I mean, she has been spectacular patrolling center field this year for the Longhorns. Well, Coach White talked to us about that a little bit. He thought Caden Henry was struggling seeing the ball against Oklahoma, considered possibly pulling her out of the lineup, but then he thought about defensively what that would do, opted instead just to make the switch and let Bella Dayton lead off, and you saw it play out. She made diving plays. She was patrolling the outfield. We saw the relay throw that she had into Vivi Martinez for that crucial out to end the game on Saturday. She's able to impact the game in so many ways, and like you said, she doesn't have to be hitting on all cylinders offensively to make the most of her opportunities in a game. Karate on to first. Locations, and that's really what it's all about. And, uh, you know, just her grit. She's got a lot of passion, and she, she wants to win. So There he is. Thank you, Coach. Hey. Appreciate you joining us. You're welcome. Welcome. Popping on camera at the end. A little cameo. Good to see him there. And coach of the... Newly number one ranked Longhorns. Yeah, Estelle Check taken over and Check earning NFCA National Pitcher of the Week honors after two brilliant outings against Oklahoma. Zero earned runs, zero walks, and zero extra base hits in six innings combined against the Sooners. Well, and he hit it on the head. I mean, what she did well was hitting location, but I think making this change does more than just put a pitcher who's been hitting locations in the circle. It allows Texas now to get some momentum going in the fact that you feed off the passion Estelle Check has. When she strikes a hitter out, her defense gets a big out. You see some yelling, some screaming, some fist pumping, and that's what you need right now if you're going to combat the energy that Texas State brings. And Texas has the shift on. No right fielder right now. Three players on the left side of the infield for the batter, Sidney Harvey. Well, and Sydney Harvey, again, hasn't had a ton of at-bats this season, but yes, Texas brings in Leanne Good to go over to second base. Washington then slides to the left side of second. Harvey does have speed, so this takes away an opportunity for Harvey to miss hit a ball, to get up in the hole. And she loops it over Washington, who was the, technically the second shortstop on that play and reaches to lead off the fourth. I guess if you put it over them, then the shift doesn't matter. Right. But Texas State, or excuse me, Texas trying to combat the speed of Harvey. Interesting, though, is you usually see that played against a slapper, and Harvey has swung away both at bats. So Texas State with the go-ahead run on at first. Here's Megan Kellner, the catcher, drops down the bunt check, fires it over to first. Out number one is Harvey advances to second. Well, now you go back up to the top of the order. The combo of Earls and Randolph here at one and two have reached four times already. This is
as you Texas State once up with a runner on Hannah Earls led off the game with a single played some strong defense reached in the third on an error she'd been on fire over the last five games coming in it tonight she was hitting 600 2-0 and from check. Well, Texas State doing a good job not chasing a lot of balls out of the zone. They're forcing Texas pitchers to come back over the plate. And the one strikeout for Gutierrez was looking, not even a swinging strikeout. So that just shows Texas, is, Texas State's game plan, excuse me, and how well they're executing it. Earls bounces one over to Scott, on to first. And they do get her two away now as the go-ahead run advances to third. Well, check not out of the woods quite yet. Piper Randolph, dangerous hitter up with two away. Walked in the first inning, singled in the second. She has now reached in 14 consecutive games. First pitch strike. Randolph already having a career year, set new career highs for RBIs and homers. Trying to put her team in front of number one Texas here in the fourth. Sends one into foul territory. Scott is there for the grab. Twice, which OU still has to play this season, but such a great momentum boost for Texas. They need to use that going into this week, obviously here against Texas State, but also in a series against Baylor that they got swept last year by the Baylor Bears. Here's Bella Dayton with a pinch hit appearance. She came up with a two out triple against Oklahoma on Sunday. Mentioned Texas number one in the latest polls, but there's, there's a good argument for a number of teams that log jam up there at the top five spot. You have Oklahoma, obviously, with only a few losses. Oklahoma State, who took the series against Texas. Duke, who has a phenomenal record, but I don't believe they've played anybody in the top 10 yet, at least heading into these latest rankings, that have been the case. Yeah, that is that is correct in regards to Duke, but they have been playing phenomenal softball. I think that was the question mark for a lot of people with Texas getting that one ranking was the fact that they did drop two of three to Oklahoma State the weekend before. And you know, OU only has three losses. How much do you punish somebody just for the two in that week? But as everyone says, it doesn't matter until season's end anyways. An argument could be made for a lot of those teams. Dayton, meanwhile, with the leadoff pinch hit walk. She's over at first. And here comes Ashton Maloney, who singled in the second inning. Lays down the bunt. Vanderford wisely lets that one roll foul. What are you blowing? The Mike White squad jumped out to the 3-0 lead in the second inning. And it seemed like they were off and running. Texas State responded with three in the third. Vanderford scoops it up, and that one hit Maloney. She is out. Well, Ashton Maloney, a great bunt, but she's running inside the running lane, so Sarah, Sarah Vanderford's throw hits her in the back. Bella Dayton gonna have to return to first base, but you do have to run outside the line there you cannot be inside the infield so one away now as you said Dayton back at first Mia Scott up as we head back to the top of the lineup Mia Scott leading off for one of the few times in her career played terrific defense against Oklahoma and of course just an offensive machine First two years of her career, she hit 377 in each season. So now what is she hitting in year number three? 
awfully close, 374, as she skies one into foul territory. She's been so consistent for Texas. Obviously, as a freshman, was behind Janae Jefferson in the two hole. As you said, let off a handful of times, 10 times to be exact last year. And we've talked about it a couple of times, Alex. She has the tools to be a leadoff hitter with her speed, with the ability to drop a bunt and hit, and hit for power on occasion. But when you talk to the Texas coaching staff, leading off just not something she really likes to do. And I believe it. You watch Mia Scott play, she's tremendous, she's impactful, not flashy. Pokes went over to Earls. She has been a machine at short, but the speed of Scott beats out the throw. Nothing Earls could do. Well, right before the pitch, Earls actually takes a jab towards second base, which gets her just a little bit late to that ground ball. Great throw, but Mia Scott's speed beats that. Easily, and you see Scott Woodard there in the background throwing his hands up just a little bit. Golden opportunity now for Leanne Good, who has had success against Mullins throughout her career. She's got the go ahead run at second. Good homered off of her a year ago in the 5-4 loss in nine innings. Vanderford leaps up for that one. The throw back to first, not in time, but they still get out number two. One of the greatest players in program history, not just at the plate, but at the hot corner as well. Well, Leanne Good drives this, and Sarah Vanderford able to rob her of a base hit. Trying to complete the double play across the diamond. At the review. Ricky Woodard wins both of her challenges tonight, and a huge out ends the fourth inning here. Also got to play in the USA program with her. She was part of the players' pool there. But such a tremendous asset, and Coach Woodard said it. You don't know if it's a blessing or a curse that you start your career with an athlete like Kristen Zaleski. Well, and it's interesting because after she played at Texas State, remember for a while she was out of softball. Kristen Zaleski became a bail bondsman. Juvenile detention officer as Vanderford flies out to Bella Dayton and left. But Ricky Woodard said, listen, it was great to see her not give up on her passion softball and see Kristen Zaleski get back in the sport she loves. Well, and the other part of that is she said, she goes, when she decides she wants to do something, she goes all in. So when she decided, oh, I'm gonna go away from softball and Bale's bondsman and correctional officer, she went all in on it. Texas State swinging away. A couple of fly outs to Bella Dayton. The, the other defensive change for Texas, by the way, Dayton to left and Leanne Good moving from left to second base, taking over for the captain, Washington, at second. Two away now for Carmen Bass, who tied up the game in the third. A quick inning for Estelle Check so far. Two outs on three pitches. That's just the fourth pitch of the inning to Carmen Bass. And that's what Estelle Check can do when she hits good locations. If your plan's aggressive in the zone, she'll mix speed. She'll just barely paint the corner. Ooh, that was a nice change up there. I thought that was, thought that was gonna even the count. Still check the first Longhorn since Haley Dolcini to earn NFCA National Pitcher of the Week honors and Big 12 Pitcher of the Week honors in the same week. Again, after that great weekend against the Suitors, but issues the two out walk here to Bass. Well, after pounding the zone to Vanderford and Anna Jones, unable to keep her groove going. And a big spot for J.J. Smith. Go ahead, run over it first. Two outs here in the fifth inning. Yeah. 
Smith, by the way, is one of the best fielders in the Sun Belt Conference. Top 10 in the conference a year ago in fielding percentage. Tied for the team lead in homers this year. And a big spot in this game as she watches that one catch the plate for strike one. Ultra competitor. The senior out of Rosenberg, Texas. Swing and a miss for strike two. Well, Coach Ricky Woodard talking about how hard J.J. Smith has been working at it this season in her senior year. Meeting with Ricky Woodard almost daily at the same time to get her swings in. It's really been paying off. She said sometimes a kid works that hard and you don't see it pay off, but she's been excited to see. A few years later. And it misses two and two. Trying to look for the big hit. Also trying to look for the first two out hit for either team. Both teams combined right now over seven with two outs. Lifts one to right center field. Maloney charging in and makes the grab. No, it falls out of her glove. And here comes Bass. And Texas State has jumped in front. What a turn of events. Well, this is a sky high fly ball right center field. Ashton Maloney coming on, but as she dives, that ball comes out of her glove as it hits the ground. Have to secure it all the way through the play, and that ball pops out. Carmen Bass with two outs is on the run, scores easily. Maloney, who made a great diving grab against Oklahoma. It's one of the best fielders on the team. That one off the glove of Scott and caught by Martinez. How about that play to end the inning? But it has been an extremely windy day, at least momentary gusts. Right now the flags are down, but when that fly ball was hit, they were gusting out to right. Do you think that affected her read of that fly ball? Well, I think it... it it played a little bit because her angle went back and around and so it delayed her coming straight in. At the same time though, she's catching that ball chest height. So I want to think you could almost basket catch and run through as opposed to diving, but you got to love the hustle and the effort. Most times, and we've seen it from Ashton Maloney, that ball does stay in her glove. So unfortunate turn of events for her in the Longhorns. So here is Katie Stewart, 0 for 2. And a leadoff walk. Jessica Mullins, this is a line you don't see from her too often. Now four walks tonight and just one strikeout, and she's winning. Well, she is, and Texas has only been able to put runs on the board in one inning, and that was in the second, but Again, you're talking about the free passes. Your team just got you the lead. You want to go in and attack the zone. Obviously, you have to be smart knowing that Katie Stewart has power and Reese Atwood has power. But when you're a pitcher like Jessica Mullins with the confidence she has, usually that thought process of what if is not in your mind. Reese Atwood watches the count go one and one. You know, after that great catch at the plate against Oklahoma. Mike White told us, thank goodness they changed the obstruction rule, because if that was a year ago, it would have been a different outcome. Well, a year ago, that would have been obstruction, yes. And the other part of that is Reese Atwood would have had to decide, do I get called for obstruction and catch the ball, or do I let the ball go? And if you had, Riley Boone was on the move, so she could have scored, and it could have been two runs in one play. But coaches coming together and that one sent to shallow center field, and it will drop in in front of Randolph. Texas with two on and no outs here in the fifth. That would two for three. It doesn't always have to be a rocket to do its job. Jessica Mullins gets on the inner half and actually jams Reese Atwood up, but she gets just enough of it to fall in front of Randolph there in center field. Texas State having to play a little bit deep to respect the power of Reese Atwood. I like 
this move for a number of reasons, and it might be shocking to people because a lot of times Ricky Woodard will live and die by Jessica Mullins. Vanderford on to first, not in time. Texas will have the bases loaded. But Madison Azua is going to be one, a different look. Two comes from the left side, so the lefty hitters are going to see a curveball away from them. She has a good changeup. And at the third point, you're getting your, the freshman experience in an environment that she's going to have to carry the load in as soon as Jessica Mullins graduates. Yeah, Martinez is definitely safe. Oh, great job by Martinez to take that bunt down the first baseline, knowing that J.J. Smith is back and Azua's left-handed. This is true freshman to come into. Now facing Jolie Mitchell, the veteran, with the bases loaded, Mitchell swinging away, fouling one off. The transfer from Notre Dame leading the Longhorns in doubles and entered the night second on the team in batting average. She's hitting 407 on the year. A dribbler over to short. Earls has to hurry on to first. They get one out, but Texas has tied it up at four. Interesting, Earls didn't even think about trying to go for the force at home. Well, that was a, a weak ground ball. It was not hit incredibly hard. She also had to cut through the middle of the plate, so she's going to have to set her feet to get around it and make the throw home. And we saw Scott Woodard walk out there and talk to his defense, and he might have said, hey, let's concede a run for po a possible double play, but the angle and speed of that ball didn't really allow Earls to have a clean play at the plate, so she made sure she got a sure out. Mitchell and Henry both swinging at the first pitch against Azua. Henry dropped down a bunt single in the second inning. Runners on second and third. That one gets away from the catcher, Kellner, and Texas retakes the lead five to four. A wild pitch for the freshman, Azua. Allows Texas to jump back in front. Oh, this pitch, a rise ball out of the zone and just off the glove of Kellner there. And then gives up a base hit to Caden Henry, Texas extending their lead. Well, that pitching move has allowed Texas to jump right back in front, now up by two. Who knows what would have happened if Mullins was in there? Well, you don't know what would have happened, and you can play the what-if game, but Coach Ricky Woodard, one, needs her freshman to have experience in these big games, but Caden Henry going with that curveball extremely well in the 5-6 hole, able to drive in the sixth run for the Longhorns. But at the same time, as we mentioned, Texas State has Louisiana to coming to town this weekend, so it is also important, as much as this game is, for Coach Ricky Woodard to have a fresh Jessica Mullins for that series. So I wouldn't be surprised if there was a possible pitch count on Mullins today as well. Keep in mind, Texas had not won a game this year when trailing after five. They were trailing heading into the bottom of the fifth inning, but have scored three times in this frame and looking for more with Henry over at first with plenty of speed, by the way. Bella Dayton at the plate. Tags one foul. You know, Alex, in years past, that decision to change pitchers might have been a little harder, I think, because a win or a strong outing here was so necessary for Texas State's resume. The way they've played this year, their RPI, they're going to regionals. There's not a question. They have proven that they can play with the best of the best, so I don't think it's as crucial for this game on their resume right now. Obviously, everybody wants to win, and you want to come out of Austin with a W, but you have to look at the big picture for Texas State moving forward in the Sun Belt and postseason. Swing and a miss. Henry is going to throw on to second. Caden Henry safe with a stolen base. Just a handful of op opportunities, but again, a good opportunity for Texas to get her chances to come to the plate right now knowing that come postseason, they're going to need everybody in the dugout ready. 
He's driven in 33 runs in her career. Has come up with some huge pinch hit at bats throughout her time here in Texas. Skies that one to deep center. And that is on Texas State. Scored four unanswered, but the Longhorns coming right back. And here is Estelle Check. Beginning in the sixth inning against the eight, nine, and one hitters, Harvey Kellner and Earls. There's strike one from Check. Texas has got a Baylor series coming up this weekend. One game in Waco on Friday, and the final two here in Austin. That's an interesting team, the Bears. You covered them last night, a narrow 2-1 victory over UTSA. They've pulled off some big wins against ranked opponents, Oklahoma State. UCLA, Baylor's ranked themselves, but it's been a strange year for them. Yeah, they've been a little bit up and down. They've dealt with quite a bit of adversity when you talk about injuries and players coming out of the lineup. But yeah, I got to see them last night in San Antonio and still just trying to find former Texas assistant and now head coach at Kansas Jennifer McFalls doing really good things there with that program. Meanwhile, Texas State sending up a pinch hitter, Bailey Welsh, in the nine spot for Kellner. Texas State trying to find some late offense here down to their final five outs of the night. You know, Estelle Check in the circle, great story of perseverance this year. She came to Mike White, the coaching staff, at the midway point of the season and said, listen, what can I do to get some more opportunities? I'm not getting as many starts as last year. Mike White said, don't worry, stick with it. Keep doing what you're doing. You're, you're not doing anything wrong. The opportunities will come. And look what happened this past weekend, NFCA Pitcher of the Week. And everything now falling into place for her this year. Well, and when you're used to being a starter, but then regulated to more relief role, and when you don't know when relief is going to happen, sometimes it's hard to mentally stay ready and stay in the game. And you think, oh, now might be time my time, and then it's not. And then you don't ever want to wish ill upon your starting pitcher to make it an opportunity for you to go in. Coach White saying some of the outings that, you know, she was slated to be in relief for, the starting pitcher did really well, so they didn't take her out. So Lolly Gutierrez throwing a lot of complete games. And, that Lolly and Estelle Check would match up nicely together, being righty lefty, both with some off speeds that look a little different. But it is, you'd have to commend Estelle Check being ready to go in the biggest series of the year up to that point after not having thrown a ton prior to it. And she continues that with this strikeout looking of Bailey Welsh, a nice little backdoor curveball inside to the lefty. I mean, she's putting together the best numbers of her career this season, check. Strikeout there, she has just five walks on the year in just over 38 innings. Facing Hannah Earls here with two away in the sixth. And then, you know, you do talk about it, T, with Tegan Kavan getting hit in game one against Oklahoma State. They used it. Lali Gutierrez, game two, who threw the complete game. Estelle Check actually got the start in game three. Threw phenomenal. Gave up one hit. It just happened to be a three-run home run. And a lot of times as a team, you think, okay, one, I mean, they gave up one hit that whole game, and that was the only hit. So still threw well. Just had the one big blow, and that's when you know your pitching staff starting to come together is when your relief roles can come in and buy into that. Martinez was there, a one, two, three inning recorded by, as far as the latest rankings are concerned, Texas has beaten already four teams in the top 10. As that one drops in, Texas has beaten number two, Oklahoma, number four, Tennessee, number five, Oklahoma State, and number seven, Stanford. Lost a few to them as well, but pretty strong resume. And I'm sure that strength of schedule absolutely plays a part into them being ranked number one in the nation with 12 first place votes. 
Well, the strength of schedule, the success against that strength of schedule, all of that plays a factor. Great play by Sarah Vandeford on that ground ball. By Leanne Good, a nice backhand, but better job making sure that throw one hop J.J. Smith to where she can handle it. But there you see all the games against ranked opponents. And right now, Texas actually in a string. After this weekend, they will have played 10 straight games against ranked opponents. You go back to Oklahoma State for three, Oklahoma for three, this midweek against Texas State, and then the three against Baylor, who's ranked 24th right now. I don't know how many times you get that many games in a row against top 25 opponents. Three Big 12 teams ranked in the top five. Texas, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State. One, two, Alex. That goes to show the strength of the Big 12 this year. Baylor being in there at 24, and then as we were talking about, Kansas has made some noise. Texas Tech has shown improvement this year as well. So Big 12, not the divide is no longer there where it was for a few years ago where you had your top three or four, and they were the only people, the only teams people were talking about. And Oklahoma State, even after the loss of Kelly Maxwell, everything is looking great for them in Stillwater right now. No worse for the wear. You talk about the, the departure of Kelly Maxwell, but you know just what they graduated as well, offensively and defensively, and they have been able to just pick right back up. And I think a lot of people in the softball world early on counted them out, thinking it might be a slight rebuild year. But Coach Kenny Gajewski has done a phenomenal job having his younger athletes ready to go and putting the pieces together nicely right from the get-go. That one caught the bat of Katie Stewart, so just a foul ball. The SEC, I believe, is it 10 teams in the top 25? 11 teams in the top 25, and next year you're gonna add Texas and Oklahoma to that list as well. The battle for the SEC in the future is going to be very interesting. Two out walk for Katie Stewart, taking a look at the top 25 by conference. 11 teams from the SEC, Texas. Saw one of those earlier this year, Tennessee. And there you see the Sun Belt both Louisiana and Texas State in the mix with the top 25. All the talk about Oklahoma that we've had, Louisiana was actually the first team to defeat Oklahoma earlier this season. An extra inning affair there in Norman, actually. And Jerry Glasgow setting up an impossible schedule, hoping to potentially host a super regional if they make it that far. That was his thought process, setting up that slate. Went through some ups and downs early. Atwood over to third, Vanderford. And here we go, seventh inning all check. Who's trying to shut the door? Piper Randolph lays down the bun, and with her speed, she will beat that out. Nobody touched it. Maybe they thought it would roll foul. Regardless, the tying run will come up to the plate. Not a terrible idea by Estelle Check to go ahead and see if this would roll foul. She saw how Piper Randolph got down the line. The only option is to see if there is any momentum on that ball to go foul, because she was not going to have a play and waste a throw against Piper Randolph. Dangerous hitter, Sarah Vanderford, 36 career home runs. Oh for three tonight. Lifts one to center. Henry, a long way to go, but makes the run for out number one. Well, after a couple collisions between Martinez and Henry this weekend, you saw Henry call that early because you saw Vivi Martinez pull off Whaley. I don't think Henry knew just how much that was going to hold up in the wind. But nonetheless, wind is... makes that long trek because she was running for a while for that one. 
Anna Jones over to second, on to second for one, over to first. And we play on two away here in the seventh. Well, off the bat, I thought this was hit hard enough for Texas to go ahead and turn a double play. You see the toss, but Anna Jones gets down the line, indeed does get across the bag before Vivian Martinez throw gets over to Katie Stewart. But Texas eliminating an important lead runner because of the speed of Piper Randolph. The speed differential between Randolph and Anna Jones is great. Two outs here in the seventh, tying run at the plate. It's Carmen Bass who drove in two in the third inning. A 270 hitter on the season. And she's down to her last strike. to that one. Home plate umpire Brian Crochet checking his mask there. Almost thought that might have gotten up and under it the way he kind of reacted initially. He's good to go. No two coming up from check. Poked over to second, and Texas closes out Texas State here in the seventh with a six. Declare. 